ஓம் நாராயணம் சுரகுரும் ஜகதே கநாதம் பக்த பிரியம் சகலோகநமஸ்கிருதம் வைகுண்யவர்ஜிதமஜம் விபமாதியமீஷம் வந்தே பவக்னமராசுர சித்த வந்தியம் நாராயணாய பரிபூர்ணகுணாணவாய விஸ்வோதய ஸ்திலயோ நியதி பிரதாய ஜானப்பிரதாய விபுதாசுர சௌக்கிய துக்கா சத்காரணாய விததாய நமோ நமஸ்தே ஆசீதுதாரகுணவாரிதிரமேய நாராயண பரதம பரமாத்த ஏக சம்சாந்த சம்விதகிலம் ஜகரே நிதாய லட்சுமிபுஜாந்தரகதூபிச்சாகிரி தோதரஸ்தஜத சதமந்தசாந்திரஸ்வானந்தபுஷோபிதமாரமஸ்ய பூத்தியை நிஜாஷிதனஹி சிருஜசுஷா வீட்சாவூவபரநாமிமேஷகாந்தி நாராயணம் நமஸ்கிருத்தியரம் நரோத்தமம் தேவீம் சரஸ்வதீம் வியாசம் ததூஜய முதீரையே மகத்வாத்வாச்ச மகாபாரதமுச்சதி நிருத்தமசோகேதாசிதேஹாஸ்திச்சித் தேவம் நாராயணம் நோஷ விவர்ஜிதம் பரிபூர்ணம் குரும் சாகீ பார்த்தம் வக்ஷியமிலேஷதாராயணம் நூர்ணபோதாங்குரூனி குருமீகீதா பாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ்யாஷ
and why we do the yajnata karma for the sake of the loka sangra for the sake of the betterment of the society around us because when everyone is good we are also good we also get the benefit of the greater good of the entire society and all of that is primarily bhagavat karya and that bhagavat karya is a sadharma right whatever is my swabhava related so that what we get you know given by bhagavan in the karma yoga all about action and there are deterrent to that action right because we all know what is the right to do what is that we are supposed to do but we end up doing the wrong things knowingly we know we are not supposed to bribe but we end up bribing we know we are not supposed to waste time on the eve of the exam but we end up doing exactly the opposite right so we, we end up you know there is some very strong force that will drag us away from what we are supposed to do arjuna's question is that you know, what is it that drags us away from our poor duty and then bhagavan then explains the parapat there is something higher than the other right the vishaya the experiences the attractions in life are amazing but to understand those attractions we have the indriya indriyas are much better indriyas are great but the manas that can control the indriyas are even more superior if it is doing what it is supposed to do well manas is amazing but the buddhi can overpower the manas right so there is one above the other in the hierarchy but beyond the buddhi there is something else like we all carry tendencies that is higher our own self can control the buddhi buddhi is going a little here and there our own atma can control the vasanas can control vasanas can drag it possibly right and also paramatma if we completely surrender unto him and uh, if his anugraha comes there are greater things that we can do amazing things we can do right people quit different different habits toughest of the habits you know by being bhagavad adina you know by surrendering unto so there is the paratattva comes into play at that time and then smoothly we will also transition into the same paratattva discussion into the jnana yoga because that is the jnana ultimate jnana is a paramatmika jnana the paramatmika jnana the paramatmas understanding because that is the ultimate way we can restrict something going wrong you know if we leave it to our own self we don't have control over ourselves right we can ahankara manas buddhi chitta they are all in four different quadrants and they all drag us in different different directions right they they don't they don't really get in sync unless we surrender unto the bhagavan that is known we don't have to repeat that you know the hereditary the heritage all across the traditions in this land people after people keep on the greatest of the people not just ordinary people right the greatest of the people keep testifying to this fact and that's the simplest way to keep them in sync the buddhi the manas the ahankara and the chitta right it's the paramatmika tattva is something that we need to accept and once we accept the paramatmika tattva then we know what is pravritti nivritti what is karma akarma what is it that we need to do what is what is it that we need to refrain from do the duty refrain from attachment refrain from expectation refrain from entitlement that's the simple thing yajna yajnaarth karma right keep on doing it and there are different different types of yajnaarth karma that is what we get delivered in the fourth chapter it will later and towards the end of it all yajnaarth karma is easier said than done because why 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 would anyone do yajnaarth karma yajnaarth karma is selfless action sacrificial action or selfless action why would people do that unless there is an internal purification and he says that jnana is ultimate we need the realization as to why we are doing that and that will happen over time to an extent you can know the jnana the indirect jnana through uh, the guru shushrushay the guru seva and things like that beyond the point in time you have to just stay put in that kind of a dharana and kalena atmani vindati he says that in the fourth chapter over time it will automatically dawn upon to you right that is what we get to hear so the realization is extremely important right and that is where he stops the fourth chapter which is jnana and then we get into the fifth adhyaya where arjuna is not done he is still asking the same question tell me what is good because your words are confusing right in the in the third chapter he says you you tell me good things about the sankhya buddhi yoga and then you also push me to this grave kind of a karma why you no know, what is good for me 
now at the end of the fourth chapter he says the same thing oh krishna at once you praise the sanyasa he says yoga sanyasa okay yoga sanyasa karmana okay he he you know renounced fruits in the action that's what krishna says but arjuna is taking it to print arjuna is asking oh krishna once you praise the sanyasa then you also praise karma yoga tell me what is good for me he keeps so arjuna has this thought about what is good for me you know immensely in the first six chapters you know that's the whole core point agenda of arjuna what is good for me what is good for me you know that that thought process started right from the first chapter you know nacha shreyo no pashyami hatva sujarma hi he only himself decided i it is not good for me to i will not attain any greatness by killing my own people a little later he gets into another extreme thought you know if they kill me that is shreyas kara for me you know yadi mama pratikaram ashastram chastra panaya dharta rastra me ham yu tatne kshema karam bhave that is only kshema that is only good for me if they kill me only that is good for me he gets into another extreme altogether and then tries he keeps asking tell me what is good tell me what is good tell me what is good. you know yachreya etayor ekam tanne bruhi sunichitam that's what we hear in the fifth chapter you no know, between the two tell me what is good for me you know definitively and the entire discourse one of the longest discourses from bhagavan we heard from the second shloka of the fifth chapter for about 28 shlokas in fifth chapter and then 32 shlokas following that immediately following that in the sixth chapter the 60 shloka which is perhaps the the seventh round of bhagavan vacha right seventh seventh round of bhagavad gita or seventh bhagavad gita right those two set of bhagavan vacha conversation primarily what is sanyasa he is not talking about sanyasa ashrama where we give up everything and run away to the woods no that's not sanyasa sanyasa here is yoga yukta sanyasa being a yogi being a karma yogi because again whenever we hear krishna saying yogi in the third chapter he says yoga he defines yoga means karma yoga no jnana yogena sankhyana karma yogena yogina so yogi means karma yogi and that is defined that has been defined in the third chapter so whenever we hear the word just yogi from krishna from no one the yogi word means karma yogi right so and then yoga sankhya are the same yoga sanyasa are the same that is something that we get to hear in the fifth chapter and the sixth chapter we hear and it is not just another sanyasa it's a yoga yukta sanyasa karma yoga yukta sanyasa and this yoga and the sankhya are the same he explains all of that but primarily the entire discourse can be broken down the fifth chapter can be looked into as the first ten shlokas he keeps on riveting the point that is only yoga yukta sanyasa without yoga ayogatah sanyatah dukha maaptum you will be in deep misery you will be in deep distress pain sorrow if you are ayogatah sanyasi right so he kept on uh, you know stressing that point then about 10 12 shlokas why do we do yoga yukta sanyasa to be the brahma yoga yukti like you know it is the uh, brahmi sthiti sanyasa being in the state of the brahma brahma dina the 10th shloka says like you know brahmanya dhaya karmani sangam tyaktva karoti yah nityate na tapape na padma padma vimamsa so whenever we do action do it under the adhina of bhagavan and once we do that just like how the the lotus stalk doesn't get uh, you know doesn't attract the water doesn't get moist it's just like a waxy layer on the surface of it just pushes the water away doesn't get attached to the water similarly one who does completely all yoga yukta actions you know sanyasta sanyasta actions being adhina of the bhagavan not for me na han karta hari karta tat puja karma chakidan whatever i do is is puja tatrapi matsata puja there also the puja done by me is tat prasadena na anyata it's only by by so do everything being under his adhina that's the that's the whole point right brahma brahmi sthiti sanyata and we can understand that to be more of a bahiranga shuti because we we bring in the thought and we force ourselves deliberate ourselves because it's not easy to do that all of these things are easier said than done right it it, it takes years of practice years of internalization of the thought and then continue doing that work it's not easy right when we simply turn our attention to couple of generations before us or in all our families 
Like, you know, all our grandfathers were amazing yogis compared to the ayogyas that we all are. Right? They, they were so undeterred in their sense of duty. They were so undeterred in their sense of responsibility. We have too many frequent distractions. Like, I mean, right from our mother's days, you could have seen that. Like, you know, every morning, clockwork orange, they would deliver the breakfast, they would prepare the bread, they would keep everything ready. But we, many a times we think, okay, today is a cheat day. I will not cook for my daughter. I will not cook for my son. I will not prepare the dabba. We will go take the parcel from this hotel. We will do swiggy this piece. Like, you know, we have that, we, we have lost that yogya right? So, uh, it takes a lot of effort for us to kind of, you know, get to the reconciliation that this is what we are supposed to do because the distractions are too many, right? So, all of these things, the Brahmani, Adhina, Yoga, Yukta, Sanyasta state, it's easier said than done. So, you have to do that. Now, first is we have to deliberate in the Bahiranga Chunti, physical, physically deliberate, right? And towards a later point in time, that should internalize. In the fourth chapter also, he says that it is an internalization process of the jnana. Here also, the sannyasa state, the yoga yukta sannyasa state also gets into an internalization process. And that's the last 10 or sloka of the fifth adhyaya. Like, you know, bhoktaram jajna tapasam sarva loka maheshwaram. If somebody can get to the realization that at the end of the day, whatever karma, karya is being done, the bhoktru, the one who is consuming it all, bhoktaram yajna tapasam, of all the yajnas and the tapas, and the one who is the Triloka Maheshwara, and the one who is the Suhrita, the friend in everybody's heart. Right? If, if, if we all get to the realization that it is him who is consuming it all, okay, then we get into absolute shanti, shanti mrichati, that we get into complete reconciliation that this is the Brahma Yoga Yukti. Like, you know, that internalization, he, he summarizes that in the last shloka of the fifth chapter. And then he then gets into the sixth chapter. We, we call it the sixth chapter, but it's a continued discussion from Bhagavan. He doesn't have a break. He continues then explaining how to do the internal process. First ten shlokas in the sixth chapter, he explains, A, the sankalpa need to be strong. You have to decide. Instead of asking me repeatedly what is good for me, what is good for me, you decide that you want to do good for yourself and you decide that no, you will never let yourself down. Some of those thoughts come, Uddharet, Atmana, Atmanam, Atmana, Atmanam, Na, Abhasadaye. All of these, so stop asking me this question, what is good for me? You decide. But I can explain to you what is yoga. Aru, Ruksho, Munehe, Yogam, Karma, Kar. If you really want to climb up the path of yoga, Karma is the way. Only way is Karma, not giving up the action. You can't give up the action. But you can't take up karma without the sankalpa for the sannyasa. Nakya sannyasa sankalpo yogi bhavati. Like, you know, kashchana. Like, you know, without... So he explains some of the basic tenets in the first ten slokas. Like, you know, the yatachitta atma siddhi. Like, you know, what it is to be. Then another twenty or slokas, he explains the techniques behind the dhyana. Atma sanyama. Atma sanyama is self-control. Dhyana is delivering tranquility or attaining that tranquility, whatever we call it, that's the name of the chapter. This chapter, the essence of this chapter is between somewhere between the 10th shloka of the 6th chapter and the, and about the 25th shloka, 23rd, 24th, 25th shloka. Those, those 25, you know, uh, uh, 15 odd shlokas together are the essence of dhyana. But there is a lot of other things around the yoga, right? So he then gives very beautiful techniques around yoga, how to how to launch yourself into the into the path of dhyana, and then how to internalize that, and then you know in between he also explains some bit around you know uh, how to keep your diet in place, how to keep your activities chase time place, and things like that, right? And then finally he concludes saying that no, yoma pashyati sarvatra, the one who can develop that samya, that equanimity state, equanimity for yourself, that samabuddhi state, and look at that you know. Nirdosham Samam Brahma in everyone. Yomam Pashyati Sarvatra Sarvam Chamai Pashyati. The one who sees me in everything and he sees everyone as part of me. And now you do your duty. See, today the problem that Arjuna has is that you know, instead of seeing the opponent in a game called war, which is his dharma, that's his kreda, that's his act, he's supposed to do that. He is now drawing unnecessary you know, attachments to them. Oh, this is my guru, this is my pitamaha, this is my putra.
ಪುತ್ರ ಪೌತ್ರ ಶಾಲ ಸಂಬಂಧಿನ ಸೊ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಅಟ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ಮೀ ಲುಕ್ ದೇಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೀ ಅಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಡೂ ಯುರ್ ಡೂ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಸಮಬುದ್ಧಿ ದಟ್ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಎನಿ ಪರ್ಸನಲ್ ಅಜೆಂಡ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟು ಅಟೈನ್ ದಟ್ ಸಮಬುದ್ಧಿ ದಟ್ ವೇರ್ ದ ಯೋಗಿ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇ ಲೈಕ್ ನೋ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿನಯ ಸಂಪನ್ನೇ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣೇ ಕವಿ ಹತ್ತನಿ ಬೆದರ್ ವಿ ಲುಕ್ ಅಟ್ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿನಯ ಸಂಪನ್ನ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಅವರ ಬ್ರಾಹ್ಮಣ ಅವರ ಚಾಂಡಾಳ ಶ್ವಪಾಕ ಶ್ವಪಾಕ ಕೈಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಚಾಂಡಾಳ ಐ ಸಿ ದೇಮ್ ಆಲ್ ವಿಥೌಟ್ ಎನಿ ಕ್ರಿಜಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಐ ಟ್ರೀಟ್ ದೆಮ್ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಕೃತಿಕ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ದಿ ಡಿಸ್ಪ್ಲೇ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ನೋ ವೆನ್ ದ ನೋ ಶುನಿ ಶೈವ ಶ್ವಪಾಕೇಶ ಹರ್ತಿನಿ ನೋ ಗವಿ ಲೈಕ್ ನೋ ದ ಕೌ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಲಿಫೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಡಾಗ್ ದ ಡಾಗ್ ಐ ಮೈಟ್ ಫೀಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಪೆಡಿಗ್ರಿ non vegetarian but i can't speed pedigree to the cow though the shloka is telling treat them all the same if i give pedigree to the elephant it might even trample upon me right never do that never try giving unnecessary things to the elephant elephant has to be fed very nicely sweet sweet things like you no know, sugar cane grass ultimate grass is ultimate you know the bamboo different different types of bamboo you know ultimate so though we have to see the same paramatma nirdosha samam paramatma in every one doesn't mean to say that we blur the line and start treating everyone the same sama darshana sama vartana are two different things right you can so so fight the war is the basic essence right for that you have to keep your buddhi stable sama and not get distracted that the whole thing work attain in that sama buddhi or the samadhi or the parama yoga sthiti right? now that's where we end the 32 shlokas of the sixth chapter now arjuna has more questions oh but this sama samya yoga that you told me is difficult okay because manas is very very chanchala manas is extremely restless right what to do right? so arjuna asked that question krishna answers with just two more shlokas we get the eighth round of bhagavad gita also completed and in the eighth round the message is as direct as it gets right abhyasa okay vairagya right abhyasa vairagya are the two most important things i mean in a summary if somebody if one of some of us are looking at patanjali yoga sutra look at shloka no, no, on the first pada itself the samadhi pada itself uh, you know sutra 12 13 14 15 that if somebody can understand those four sutra i think it's all about yoga yoga is all defined there no abhyasa vairagya abhyam sandirodha chitta vritti nirodha nirodha of shitta vritti can only happen through abhyasa vairagya and then patanjali also explains what is abhyasa tat prasthito yatno bhyasa right so he explains patanjali also exactly krishna summarizes them in beautiful common man's language in these two shlokas asamshayan mahabaho mano durnigraham chalam abhyasena tu kaunteya vairagyena cha grishyate he beautifully explains that that's another complete round of bhagavad gita whatever we have to know about bhagavad gita those two shlokas will have that we we have another two small shlokas in the second chapter that's also complete bhagavad gita if you can contemplate on that two shlokas and this set of two shlokas i think the entire bhagavad gita is contained in those and we finish the eighth round of bhagavad gita today now arjuna's question is most pertinent pertinent uh, applying to all of us and it is now gone beyond this initial dwandva initial confusion the initial confusion is tell me what is good tell me what is good now he has gone over that he's taken you know crossed all of the confusion now he's into a different elevation path path of elevation the question now is okay krishna i have shraddha shraddhaya upetah ati ayatihi ayatihi means somebody who cannot complete the yatna for some reason not necessarily he has to get his mind distracted ayati shraddhaya upetah okay yoga charita manasah aprapti yoga samsindhi after incompletely getting into the yoga samsindhi kaam gatim krishna gachati where does he go o oh krishna that's the question and he gives an example there it's like a piece of cloud a ball of cloud which got separated from its bigger piece now it doesn't have the second one not the first one it just get dissipated in thin air that exactly what's going to happen to a person in the path of yoga siddhi he does not get yoga siddhi and he is also given up all his karma siddhi he doesn't have any worldly satisfaction worldly experiences of good you know sensory experience he's given up all of this 
for the sake of that now this is gone any which way that is also not possible even if he is completely endowed with shraddha but for some reason he doesn't acquire it and that is so now we are moving away from what is good what is good we know kartavya sadhana we can deliver if we can understand the core message of those six chapters till now i think how to be at least a little bit our like our grandfather you know kartavya nirantara clockwork kartavya sadhaka right i i won't say so much about my father's generation they were good much better than what we are uh, we are absolute ayogyas my generation i can count myself into it and so many people that i see around me just the sheer number the amount of time we all spend in clubhouse that should give a slight indication to the amount of ayogyata that we all have acquired and we keep doing the same thing so many political discussions right at least the devarnama chintana is slightly better i am not saying it's good right it's slightly better rather than using the time in some nonsensical never ending political discourses at least devarnama chintana is slightly better but the ayogyatana at least so many of us are slightly better at the again this is, a, this is just a consolation prize we need to pat our own back not it doesn't give us any extra gold medal or trophy right uh, you know slightly better some consolation there are still just just go to the hallway and see the number of people around us getting toxically involved in uh, uh, the political discussion little later after 11 o'clock some of these rooms are like drag fest like you know they just keep on never endingly they keep on going on and on and on like and there is some pride that people take in running the room some kashmir style they have the room discussion going on for three consecutive days or four consecutive days or one full week and again most of them are repeat toxic information now i'm not saying there is that i'm not saying there is unnecessary it's all needed but yukta ahara vihara that's what we hear in the sixth chapter right all of them need to be in moderation right and then there is another extreme of it so there are some of us who endlessly spend our time in club house in in chintana paramatmika chintana uh, you know bhajana you know endlessly keep crying and chanting and so see ayogyatana comes in different shapes and sizes and there are people come friday friday 6 o'clock they hit the bar and restaurant it's a compulsive behavior today most of our multi multinational corporates it's a very standard thing every saturday they have to take the car and go for a long drive okay some nonsense need to happen or it's a mix of uh, on paper good things and you know actually bad things like you know take the cycle and go on the way back from mandi hills you know stop over in adaba and then drink beer you know guzzle i mean you see a kind of ayogyatana it's it's coming different shape and the kind the way we have packaged it is also be our self deceiving ourselves you know in the name of doing something good we do some but nonetheless right i mean let's not get into this but if we have to just look at our two generations prior and our current generation i can easily say our generation is loaded truck loads of ayogyatana is loaded in our life right compared to that now how to overcome that the essence of the first six chapters helps us very nicely get analytical like right? analytical the best way of analysis is separate the atma from the sharira and then analyze the consequences if you can do that i think that takes us to a great extent you know yogyata that's what the yoga is all about you know increase the yogyata then karma understanding that yajnaarta karma inevitability of karma so the, all that is spoken in these six chapters i think it's brilliant and then samya so the the samatva the tranquility if we can achieve that then we are in autopilot mode like little bit like our grandfather you know they would be appearing the same white and white attire but they are there everywhere this function that function our family function neighbor family function distant relatives function they are there everywhere but also got their own dozens of children married so many things right the next phase takes us to a little higher level altogether this question from arjuna what happens to a person who does not achieve the karma siddhi and does not even achieve the yoga siddhi where does he go the first assurance that krishna gives is no he, he uses a couple of nice uh, sambodhana partha na eva iha not here na amutra not nor there nor here after tasya vinashah vidyate that 
the the loss of that is known vinasha nahi kalyana krutasti for whatever good things there are people have done okay people who have been doing good things durgatim tata gachati they don't have any durgati two very strong assurances now vinasha i think we spoke about this let me just remind that whenever we hear the word vinasha nasha they are chaturvidha nasha nasha the way we understand today i don't know how we understand but in the puranas now we get the definition of what what nasha is nasha means anityatvam deha hani dukha prasi apurnata anityatvam not being in the present we all tend to be either brooding over the past or worrying about the future that itself is a nasha anityatvam deha hani this is something that we all understand anityatvam dukha prasi that also is something that we can understand you know, acquiring dukha apurnata apurnata is a very funny word right we all have the sense of incompleteness the very basic fact that our dharma shastras talk about artha purpose there is a purpose there is a incompleteness in my current shape there is something i need to do right so we all need to do something we have plenty to do all of us the mortals our human life we have plenty to do but tad abhavah no nashah chaturvidah prokah these are the four types of uh, chaturvidah nasha right tad abhavah hare hi sada tad abhavu hare hi sada only shri hari the bhagavan param brahma only he is devoid of all four people say when people analyze this very deep they think even mahalakshmi supreme goddess she is also got nasha she is not devoid of them she doesn't have anichatva she doesn't have dukha prapti she doesn't have deha hani but she has apurnata she is never complete without bhagavan like prakriti cannot be complete without the purusha very simple thing right there is something missing for a prakriti so even for mahalakshmi the supreme goddess also the four type nasha is not completely you know detached she has that apurnata at least right so only the bhagavan ultimate bhagavan param brahma in whatever name or shape we want to know him right he is the only one who doesn't have any of his vinasha and now he says tasya vinashah na vidyate vinash tasya se vidyate when we say it's one of these four or a few of these four right? that's what we need to understand when he says you know partha naveha namutra vinash tasya vidyate one or more of these four types of nasha will not happen for a person who has kept himself very nicely kalyana you know nice work you know pure sattvika punya kara kalyana krutvast durgatim tata gachati na iva iha okay kaschitati durgatim gachati he never gets into that kind of thing. very similar to something that we heard in the second chapter you know neha bhi kramanasho si pratyavayo na vidyate there is no adhikrama nashah there is no loss of effort here for whatever you do in terms of your dharma na pratyavaya there is no side effect there is no uh, you know ill consequences also for that that's exactly what we hear now he goes on to explain further and further into that and that is where we are leading to the 41st shloka of the 6th chapter and uh, shraddha ji has given a link uh pinned it under the under the title of the rule you click on that i think we enter the 41st shloka of the 6th chapter it reads like this prapya punya krutan loka nushitva shashvati samah shuchi nam shrimatam gehe yoga bhrashto bhijayate prapya punya krutan loka nushitva shashvati samah shuchi nam shrimatam gehe yog drashto vichayati then you scroll down a little bit you can see the padat cheda again addressing the same tata tata is like a very dear fellow son a son a partha prapya punya krutam lokan ushitva shashvati samah shuchina shrimatam gehe yog drashta abhijayati yoga prashta because yoga prashta is what the question is for so one who does not completely acquire yoga what will happen to him he is referring to bhagavan always stays relevant to the context we will see what anvaya sounds like the prose order just above the padacheda we get anvaya right a partha 
पुण्यकृता लोकान प्राप्य तत्र शाश्वती समाह उषित्वा योग भ्रष्ट शुचीना श्रीमता गेहे अभिजायते सो कृष्ण इन द प्रीवियस श्लोक श्लोक नंबर फोर्टी ही सेड वेरी क्लियर दी टू थिंग्स वन देर इज नो नाशा फॉर द योगी explaining more of amutra not here after there is no loss right he has to answer both part how there is no loss of effort in this current janma and how this yoga yoga the path of yoga does not give you any loss in the next janma i think here he is talking about the next janma let us see what the meaning of this shloka is click on dictionary on the top he partha punya krita lokan prapya you know having attained these worlds of high righteousness tatra shashvati hi samah ushitva they having spent immemorial number of years shashvati hi shashvati hi permanent like right? forever but it can be taken up as a very long duration of time immemorable you know for for uncountable you know immeasurable number, number of years yoga prastha that yoga prastha the person who could not complete the yoga shuchina shrimatan gehe abhijayate he gets born in the house of shuchina shrimatam those who are pure shuchi and shrimatam who are very glorious shri shrimatam in some translations might say in the rich house but richness also has different dimensions right richness is not a single dimension like for example when we when we chant the shri sukta shri 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 mata is basically shri right shri when we when we chant the shri sukta uh, asya shri panchadasha panchadasha shri sukta the, the name of that uh, sukta is called the panchadasha sukta it's the 15 shlokas 15 rak 15 mantras right in that shri sukta panchadasha tasya anand kardama shri da chikli tendura super krishaya the sun of shri the, the dimension the extensions of the shri are ananda kardama chiklita shri da indira sukha vishaya these are the five sankalpa ananda absolute bliss absolute happiness that itself is shri that itself is richness kardama kardama is uh, moisture like you know wherever there is moisture moisture is extremely rich where there is moisture is where the vegetation happens where the vegetation happens is where prosperity happens right that's very very essential so kardama chiklita now kardama without chiklita is not right chiklita without kardama is not right chiklita is the fertility it has to have the fertility it has to have the moisture both right fertility shrida that is the real richness opulence shrida that's the opulence and indira sukha indira sukha is the mind control indu in indira Indu, so my absolute indriya nigraha right? so indira sukha so indriya nigraha absolute so the five ways in which the shri mat shri shri mata or shri mati or the richness can perhaps manifest is we get one hint i'm not saying this is the only way but when you look at the shri sukha so shri is all about the richness so shri sukha like this the richness when we see the richness the five rishis that are called out in the beginning of the shri sukha are the ananda kardama chiklita Shrida, Indira, so the, so these are the five. So Shrimati, those who are glorious, yes, but what is it beautiful, auspicious, auspicious, venerable, uh, you know, uh, opulent? All of these things we can somehow look at it in five fold in ways at least when we take a clue from uh, the Shri Sukta and Shuchi. Shuchi is basically very clean, you know, Kaya, Vacha, Manasa. It's a basic thing, you know, clean people, right? So let's see what. Uh, Aurobindo translation for this says. Aurobindo says, "O Patha, having attained the worlds of the righteous, punyakrita lokan prapya." Okay, 
and mm-hmm. having dwelt there for immemorial years. Okay, Shashwati hi samaha ushitsa. He who fell from yoga, that yoga brastaha, is again born in the house of such as are pure and glorious. It means the next janma, next janma will be clean. See, not the, not the next janma, within our small janma, we have many, many upajanmas. Like, you know, in English, we have this idiomatic way of saying, he had a fresh lease of life. He had a fresh stock of life. You know, we have the, idiomatically we use it. Whenever uh, we, we come into a new uh, incubation, whenever we discover ourselves something new, whenever we enter a new phase of life, whenever we change job or so people say it's a new life, all the best to your new life. It's not a new life, it's the same old life, but a new job. But new job you know, makes it appear like a new life. So we are born again. Right? Whenever we have a new job, whenever we get promoted, whenever we change the face of our life, like for example, from studenthood to the uh, you know employment stage, from employment stage to the from bachelor to being a married guy, from married guy to uh, spinster, you know, all of these divorcee or you know, widow, widower, you know, all of these are different, different janma that we have, right? And of course, there is one janma that happens after we give up this current body. But the current body is not also current because as we see, there are millions of our body cells that are dropped out, that are being being purged out and new cells are being born, right? So as we speak, even the physical body is not the same. But the way we popularly understand, once we give up this body, then in the Adhidaivika language, when we read the Garuda Purana, no, there is some Ananda Loka. There are different, different Lokas in which the Asma that keeps living. Ushitva right? Shashwati hi Samaha. Then after that, when it has to get into the time of a rebirth, you know, it acquire a new Janma, it will be born in the Shri Matam Gehe, Shuchi Nam Gehe, is what they say. That's what most of the translations talk about. Right? So, like, you know, everyone says that, you no. Know, like, you know, based on your past karma only, whatever good or bad janma that we acquired, it's all because of our prarabdha karma, all of these things. That's what popularly we understand. This is all the Adi Devi Kamsha. Right? Why is it that you know, somebody was born as uh, you know, Ambani's son? Why, why am I being born into a poor man's son? So this kind of question, these are all Adi Devi because your past janma. But consider that within our own current janma, like for example, see today, uh, we have uh, uh, we have this uh, chess tournament. Chess tournament is a good example, right? In the chess tournament, what happens is, suppose uh, when we enter any local chess tournament, if there are 100 participants, right? The way they operate is very, very simple. They don't draw the round robin knockout faces like how many other sports do. They just randomly place any two people. Because at the end of the first round, people who won the game get one point. People who lost the game got zero points. People who drew their game get 0.5. So the second round, what they do is they group all the ones and they do random lots within them. They take all the 0.5s, they make random lots within them, you know, pair one against the other, and take all the zeros and then randomly pair them against each other. So at the end of the second round, we will have a good number of people who have two points, a few people who have 1.5 points, a few people who have one point, a few people who have 0.5 points, people who have zero. And again, all the twos are club, you do a random lotting. So if I have to be consistently winning, I have to keep on climbing up, I have to keep on winning. I have to constantly be among the winner lot at the end of the first round. I'll be among the group of the one pointers at the end of the second round. If I'm on, on the group of the two pointers at the end of the third round, I'll be among the group of the three pointers. We will see that at the end of seven rounds, we will know who the clear winner is. They will get into that company. Okay, company of the better and better, cleaner and cleaner players because their quality of game is also clean. They don't make silly moves. Their, their, their moves are extremely textbookish, at least to begin with. At least the opening games are very, very textbook. They are very, very clean in their game. They don't play anything dirty, anything nasty. And then Shrimatam, they are, they are the group of the opulence. Opulence can come in different, different shapes and sizes, maybe understood. Right? Or maybe take an example of people who become yoga prashta. Like for example, a lot of army people in the Air Force, a lot of people. I mean, there are a lot of people who try to become Air Force pilots. They 
get into a lot of hardship trying to become air force pilot but there is some nonsense in most of the cases that is few of my quite a few of my friends who couldn't make it to the air force right it is primarily because there is some fifth and the sixth vertebrae in the spinal cord i believe i, I don't even know what that is between the two bones there is a gap between them you you look normal you look fit you are amazing when it comes to flying apparently the gap i don't know whether it is too much or too less that gap is becomes fatal when you eject the parachute button it it can become fatal so at the end after all the rigorous trainings and things like that at the end they will check this bone structure of yours in the spinal cord and then they reject you such a disappointment for a lot of these people but what will happen these are the most preferred guys when the commercial airlines are flying for their discipline because they are army trained right they are air force trained they have an amazing so the chushina of shrimatan gehe they get into then their next lease of life they are born into a different kind of shrimatan gehe like you know the, and these the boeing uh, flyers in the international route and all it's a very very high paying job like these these people are minting money right but they are disappointed they they definitely became yoga prasta from what they really wanted to be like people who get into the air force training they want to be surya kiran pilot nothing less than that they want to be doing those sorties and things like that right uh, then nothing less than that is uh, yoga sadhana you no know, some said the yoga some said the for them right but they get yoga prasta they come to this so even there you will have some chance go and then uh, your vertebrae thing is gone okay you can't get into indian air force maybe mauritius air force will give you something i don't know maybe the boeing is giving you you still fly like you might get into rescue missions later so some yoga some siddhi is happening so nothing goes for a toss right people who do research after research after research you know they don't achieve what they really want to crack maybe they get into research with the aim to come up with an amazingly sustainable bio degradable product they will not achieve that but they will get into something they will be they will, there is no loss of effort nor here nor in the next life that's what he says and after you spend a lot of good amount of time okay that immemorial years you know uh, ushitva okay punya krita loka ushitva in the good place because when we do that work also like people who are struggling to become the air force pilots their campus life their camp life is also amazing for them and having spent a lot of time there you will on the next lease of life you will again come back to the sichi nam shri matan ji yoga prashna abhijayate so neither here nor hereafter there is a loss of effort right having attained to the worth of the righteous and having dwelt there for immemorial years he who fell from the yoga sadhana is again born in the house of such as are pure and glorious right with that we move on to shloka number 42 shloka number 42 says athava athava yogi nameva kule bhavati dhimata etadhi durlabhataram loke janmayati idrisham athava yoginaayeva kule bhavati dhimata etadhi durlabhataram loke janmayati idrisham the padacheda then scroll down athava yoginam eva kule bhavati dhimata etadhi durlabhataram loke janmayat idrisham right what does the anvaya say athava dhimatam yogina eva kule bhavati okay kim bhavati that is explained in the previous shloka abhijanana jayate jananam bhavati okay athava dhimatam yogina eva kule bhavati idrisham janma okay janma is mentioned here only idrisham janma janma bhavati and idrisham janma yat etat lokehi durlabhataram what does that mean for that you need to click on dictionary right hey partha athava or and when you see athava in this instance or even better right we have to add that even better even better athava even better dhimatam yoginam eva kule janma bhavati or even better he will be born his birth will happen his kule janma bhavati his birth will happen kaha kutra dhimatam yoginam kule eva in the kula in the ancestry of dhimatam yogis dhimata see 
Bhi is buddhi, extremely intelligent, extreme, like, you know, yona prachodayat, right? That's what we keep asking when we chant at Gayatri. Right? Bhimatam yogi, people who are completely wise and, uh, you know, the, the wise and the prachodaya, people who are completely enlightened. That can, that, that's the kind of a thing that we need to see. Dhimatam yoginam kule eva tasya janma bhavati atava. Or even better, he will be born in the house of amazingly glorious, intelligent yogis. And then he also says, idrisham janma, this kind of a janma, yat etat lokehi durlavataram, is extremely rare to obtain in this loka. Even better. So he's again explaining there is no loss of effort here nor hereafter. Or even better, you will be born. Like for example, a lot of people, they want to do a lot of things. Right now, Finally, in IASE, he will not be able to succeed. Okay, IASE even goes to the extent of scrapping the project that he is working on. This happened to some of my cousins. You know, working on some project and they completely shelved it off. Right? Such disappointment. But a few years down the line, they got into some corporates. And again, like for example, today there is a big craze for AI. AI, if you were to look at what AI was, very few people were looking at it, you know, from 15 years ago in labs, in math labs and things like that. Today, there are many people who are not only paying us amazing amount of money, but if we have the right inclination, they will also fund the higher education, you know, more learning. Because one thing about all these big corporates is we also learn, you know, while being paid, you know, handsomely, we also learn a lot. Right? So, in Yoginam, Kule, Eva, if you worked in Cortana, if a lot of people worked on Cortana, right? uh, they got into Siri, okay, Alexa, these are the same people. Almost every mobile company would have had uh, its uh, AI engine, you know, speech assistant engine. Many of them died. And some people would have had, achieved some amazing amount of yoga. But for some reason, their yoga became ayat, didn't complete because the companies had to shut down. No worries. I know a lot of my friends who were ex Nokia. They are they are absorbed in Samsung. They are absorbed in Apple. You know that will happen. It will just go. Like in the yoga samsiddhi, Atava yoginam eva kule dimatam yoginam kule eva janma bhavati. Your next janma. And again, abhijayate. Right. The word used in the previous shloka is abhijayate. Adi janana is not necessarily the physical janana. It can be, but it's more of you know the next form of life, the next insult, the next innings that we play and things like that. And that kind of a thing is extremely difficult. Not everyone who had to walk out of Nokia when it was downsizing, you know, got into Apple, got into Google, got into Microsoft. Some of them, you know, got into other areas, of course, in the same relative field, but not as lucrative as working say for Siri or you know, uh, Google Assistant or your Cortana. It's not. It's not the same, right? Alexa. It's not the same. There are many other speech uh, assistants. It's not the same, right? So, getting the same kind of a dhimatam yogina pule janma is extremely difficult. That's what Krishna is saying. So, don't worry about the yoga prastha. You know, more and more assurances. Let's see what uh, uh, what Arabinda says for this. Arabinda interpretation says or or, or even better, I would have Athava, when we see this in the contextual at least, Athava, like you know, in in any Indian language, we say this Athava in this kind of a context actually implies even better. Or even better, he may be born in the family of the wise yogi. Indeed, such a birth is rare to obtain in this world. See, this, uh, uh, this Yoginam Kula is also very great. Uh, I think some of us might have attended that talk from. Uh, Arubindji, right, the Jata Veda room. Uh, a few days ago, he was explaining to us the Mundaka, the Atharvan Upanishad. You know, Sayo Havai Tat Paramam Brahma Veda, Brahmaiva Bhavati, Nasya Brahma Vistule Bhavati. The one who 
understands that brahma completely see yoga brahma once he understand in the, the path of yoga our understanding of brahma becomes extremely clearer and once we understand the brahma the concept of brahma the tattva of brahma very clearly that person also becomes part brahma brahma eva bhavati na asya brahma vitkule bhavati and he, his birth will also take place in the so that brahma kula the kula is a very significant one and krishna is telling that you know janma in the kula is also you know tarati shokam tarati papmanam so that kind of a kula is also extremely important right uh, uh, it's not easy to get into the company and today you might see the effect of such kula uh, is multifold i think krishna explains a little bit of it but when we see right there are many people who behave like yogis at the age of 5 6 and a lot of positive impact is definitely coming from the household right it, it the, the household i mean when we are born we are all born in anda tamas we are all born with crying faces of course even the extremely uh, you know uh, accomplished yogis of the previous life when they come back here to fulfill whatever residual fulfillment they need to achieve right even they are born in the tajnana but they will be woken up very soon very quickly so kula has a very big role and this is a good testimony coming from krishna that this is all because of the past life karma that is a good deed and that is extremely difficult you being the you no know, yoga roda ikshu like you know you being desire of desire of climbing up the path of yoga and you being in the house of such people who are also desire of climbing the path of yoga or even better who are already yogis right so there are two things both coming together is an extremely rare event right we move on to shloka number 43 बुद्धिसंयोगं लभते पौर्वदेहिकं यतते चतुतो भूय संसिद्ध गुरुनंदना तत्र तं बुद्धि संयोगं लभते पौर्वदेहिकं यतते चतुतो भूय संसिद्ध गुरुनंदना तो परछेद यत्र तं बुद्धि संयोगं लभते पौर्वदेहिकं यतते च ततः भूयः संसिद्धौ गुरुनंदनम वी हैव टू अनजंबल दीस वर्ड्स दैट वी गेट इन पदच्छेद व्हेन वी डू दैट वी गेट अनवय राइट इन द क्रोज ऑर्डर हे गुरुनंदन तत्र तं पौर्वदेहिकं बुद्धि संयोगं लभते ततः भूयः च संसिद्धौ यतते आई थिंक दिस इज एग्जैक्टली व्हाट आई स्पोक सम टाइम बैक राइट हे गुरुनंदन हे द guru nandana joy of guru this is nice right so guru when we hear the word guru normally we tend to think it is uh, kaurava but here it is arjuna arjuna is also guru nandana because see at the end of the day both pandavas and kauravas are essentially kaurava right pandavas are an extra special category of kaurava right so they are also but fundamentally they both are kaurava they are all part of the same guru vamsha right Uh, so hey guru nandana and he is a joy of the guru he is a he is a pet for a lot of people including people like gandhari you know dhritarashtra bhishma we all know how much he loves arjuna so he guru nandana so he is an amazing kid right he is he is kept everyone happy hey guru nandana tatra tam pavadehikam buddhi sanyogam labate they he recovers that buddhi sanyoga that was developed in the previous life when he comes into the the house of the yoginam kule janma bhavati he said that so that extremely rare case of birth there he will immediately regain that mental state that buddhi whatever was gained in this previous life right tataha and then bhuyah cha immediately again also also again some sindho yadate he will again immediately start going like how suddenly somebody wakes up from the sleep and then as if yesterday's work was not not stopped at all we again get back to our work right uh, you know in between like people who are dedicated workers i might have been working on some crazy research all night long and again i slept the minute i get up i again start so there is no time lost in recovery now that is the effect of being born in a house of yogi dhimata yogi yogis yogina when we have the company of so many good yogis 
the time to retrieve our purva abhyasa whatever we had done in the past whatever we have acquired, acquired earlier tam purva dehikam buddhi sanyogam labhate that you know, we will again soon you know be one with whatever we had developed in the previous life okay bhu yasya samshiddho yadate and again he gets going in the in the path of yoga and see at the adi bhautika level this is to people who worked on some uh, you know speech assistant software say in nokia thinking nokia was a big brand at one point in time and nokia had to downsize and then they went into areas like siri and they immediately as good as you know nothing stopped in the previous like again get going little bit of initiation little bit of orientation little bit of uh, you know understanding of the, the languages used the, the methods used you know the design part of it little bit of you know hand holding but people will directly immediately get on with it right so that's the advantage of being in the yogina bhimata yogina pule you know there is not much of loss when you get back to the next phase you know you will immediately start with very little you know up time you know the restoration time right let's see what arabindo says for us so again all of this is na iha na amutra yoga prastasya vinashah vidyate there is no here nor here after there is known to be a loss for a yoga prastha a person who could not complete his yoga it's a continuous effort keeps on going and on going so arabindo says there he recovers the mental state of union of the buddhi with the divine which he had formed in this previous life buddhi sanyoga buddhi sanyoga is get back to the intellectual frame of mind and with this he again endeavors for perfection bhu yaha yatate o joy of gurus very simple hai tatvam buddhi sanyoga so we move on from here to the next shloka shloka number 44 it reads like this पूर्वाभ्यासेन तेन क्रियते शवशोपि सह जिज्ञासुरपि योगस्य शब्द ब्रह्माति वर्तते पूर्वाभ्यासेन तेनैव क्रियते शवशोपि सह जिज्ञासुरपि योगस्य शब्द ब्रह्मा शब्द ब्रह्माति वर्तते देन वी रीड द पद छेद पूर्वाभ्यासेन तेन एव क्रियते हि अवशह अपि सह जिज्ञासु अपि योगस्य शब्द ब्रह्मा अति वर्तते सो व्हेन वी पुट दिस वर्ड्स इनटू द प्रोज ऑर्डर द अन्वय हे अर्जुन हे पार्थ सह व्हिच इज दैट योग प्रस्थ सो इज नाउ अभिजायते इन सुशीनाम श्रीमता नो धीमता योगिनाम कुले अभिजायते सह सह अवशह अपि तेन पूर्वा अभ्यासेन एव हि क्रियते योगस्य जिज्ञासुः अपि शब्द ब्रह्म अति वर्तते इट्स लाइक बिट ऑफ कोरोलरी टू व्हाट वी हर्ड एंड अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ फाइन ट्यूनिंग हियर व्हाट डज इट मीन वी क्लिक ऑन डिक्शनरी सह सह इज अ प्रणाम ही एंड ही इज द वन हु इनिशियली वाज योग प्रस्थ हु कुड नॉट कंप्लीट हिज योग बट देन हैड अ सेकंड इंस्टॉलमेंट इन either shuchi nam shrimatan ge hi well well to do you know next launch pad or in the house of the yogis either case right saha so, that person avashah api even irresistible or without doubt avasha avashah avashah tena purva abhyasena eva with that past abhyasa alone with the force of the previous practice the previous life's practice the previous uh, you know janma's practice he See, it gets carried on, gets attracted to what to yoga. Immediately, with that previous habit, it's become a vasana in him. He doesn't take too much time. Immediately, he will recover the buddhi according to the previous yoga. And then, because he has so also has the tendency, the the mental imprint, he will immediately get dragged into the yoga path of yoga, yoga samshinti. And yoga sya jnana suhu api a person. who is seeking the knowledge of yoga also proper knowledge not just textbook knowledge right api even if even if he is simply a jignasu of the yoga in that state also shabda brahma ativartate 
he would have gone beyond the need requirement or the essence of the shabda brahma shabda brahma is the veda veda sa upanishad so we always have this rupatmaka prapancha shabdatmaka prapancha rupatmaka brahma shabdatmaka brahma right for us shabda is what we kind of you know is the indirect way of knowing everything both the prapancha as well as the brahma the, the easiest way to understand it all is through the shabda and beyond the shabda like for example we sit in the class lot of us who do engineering at all so quite easy there is more time we spend with the shabda brahma there is very little time we spend with the rupa brahma rupa brahma is the laboratory the la- the time in the laboratory is very limited but the time in the classroom is too much so much is to be learned we can't achieve every piece of knowledge through practical means alone right you have we have to have more and more of theoretical knowledge and that's how we are capable of assimilating millenniums worth of ancestral you know hand me down knowledge it's not easy if we have to experience them all you know in our life and then only learn it's not easy right so shabda brahma is very important and these are the scriptures so tena purva abhyasena eva hi priyate there he gets dragged he gets drawn into that yoga through his purva abhyasa through his vasana avashah vashati vasha is captivity ava is bhagavan bhagavan's captivity avashah <laughs> avashya you know uh you know uh, without doubt right avashya you know definitely he gets dragged and not just definitely in the captivity of the bhagavan because in the path of yoga you are doing everything brahman yadha ya sarva karmani sangam tyaktva karot right you do everything uh, you know for the sake of brahma so in the captivity of brahma brahma captivity of the bhagavan or is the bhagavan vasha is the captivity right so that is like you know bhagavan doesn't let you the vasana will be so strong he will drag you to the yoga path path of yoga and they forget about you being a yogi you don't have to become a yogi even if you are a jignasu even just being a mere jignasu you you would have gone beyond the essence of the scriptures like today also we know a lot of people who don't really need to read scriptures they are born in a liberated state they are born in that you know yoga samsiddhi state like no and 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 i think ramakrishna paramahamsa gives a nice uh, example for this like for example the quote that i hear from ramakrishna paramahamsa on this is that uh, you know shabda brahma the importance of shabda brahma right shabda and rupa there are two and rupa is the real thing the rupatmaka brahma is what we need to acquire not just the shabda but the brahma shabda is a, is a launching pad it's a stepping stone like in the the fourth chapter also there is a indirect knowledge which is a scriptural knowledge but there is a non indirect knowledge which is the aparoksha knowledge the paroksha jnana which is the indirect knowledge for that we need to tad vidhi pranipate na paritrashne na sevaya okay kasya seva no jnanina tattva darshina seva of the uh, people who are uh, uh, jnanis and tattva darshin like you know of them you have to do seva and then have keen enquiry with them they will you know impart knowledge to you that becomes the indirect knowledge the paroksha knowledge okay that is the shabda brahma that is still the shabda brahma right so getting to hear the text and then understanding them okay with our own with the aid of a guru and things like that still indirect knowledge but it has to become direct knowledge or non indirect knowledge or realized knowledge you know kalena atmani jindat we have to understand that so kalena atmani in that wrong time we don't have to really hit the end point even in that wrong state of yoga samsiddhi even if you are a jignasu still trying to understand what is this yoga in totality you would have gone beyond the essence of the shabda brahma shabda brahma is not necessary and the uh, and the example the ramakrishna paramahamsa gives is very very simplistic like today uh, you know whenever somebody comes from the us we send them a message saying that hey get me this get me this get me this get me this we write, we write a letter right uh, get me this laptop you know this is the configuration this is the brand name okay this is the memory all of this or get me this perfume we make a list and send it to oh shraddha ji you are coming from the us okay get me this so shraddha ji is uh, she takes the list from me 
and she will be looking to that. That was the Shabda Brahma. That is the documented scripture. Now, the real Rupatmaka Brahma is going to those shops and acquiring those products. That's the real Brahma. Now, in the pursuit of getting the real Brahma, she would have just understood the paper. That's enough. She will go to the respective shops. Okay, this is the laptop. This is what Bharataji asked for. She'll pick them all up. But Shabda Brahma is not needed. Once we have internalized what is in the paper, we don't need the Shabda Brahma. And even better, after coming to India, giving me all of these things, the Shabda Brahma, she won't even have to talk about it. Neither I will talk about the Shabda Brahma, nor she will talk about Shabda Brahma. Okay, the essence is already there with us. So, that is primarily what he is trying to say. Shabda Brahma Adi Vartate. Now, this is the second time, perhaps, it appears like Krishna is negating the necessity, necessity of, uh, uh, you know, our uh, Veda. In the second chapter, he says, Yava Nartha Udapani. Sarvataha Samputo the Ketavan Sarve Shuvedishu Brahmana Sri Janataha. A Brahmana, a person who is in the path of Brahma, he doesn't need Veda. Okay, when you are already living in a place which is filled with water, which has got abundance of water, you really don't need a well. You don't need to dig your you know, effort in digging the land and getting the water. You have water you know, flowing beside you. You know, Krishito, Jasnavi, Tire. Upamvanshiti Durmati, that's something that Bhishmacharya says later in the Shanti Parva to uh, Yudhishthira. If you are thirsty in the banks of Ganga and you look for a well, okay, that's a Durmati, that's, a, that's an absolute rubbish thought. You have water flowing next to you, right? So when you already know the essence of it, you really don't need the Shabda Brahma. I think what he says is, it is not the Shabda Brahma is discarded, cancelled. But if you are in the path of yoga, if you are in that advanced path of yoga, many of those people would have overcome the necessity of Brahma. They know what they, they know what exactly is Shabda Brahma trying to say. They don't need one scripture, another scripture, another scripture. When you look at all our great Acharyas, they have commented on the top eight, top ten Upanishads. Right? We don't really need to get into all the Shabda Brahma. They all talk the same. In fact, when we started this entire Bhagavad Gita journey here in the Pratipadasa, we started with the 15th chapter. In that, Krishna makes a very clear cut statement. Vedesha Sarve Rahameva Vedya. When you look more and more and more of the Vedas, you can keep on studying them you know, all through your life. But at the end of the day, the only thing that you have to understand in the Vedas is this. Vedesha Sarve Vedesha Ahameva Vedya. I am the only one to be known in all the Vedas. So, When he says Shabda Brahma Adi Vartate, it's not that you know he's demeaning the sense of the Shabda Brahma. After a point in time, you're in an autopilot mode, you don't need the Shabda Brahma anymore. Right? That's what he says. So Prayatna Jatamana, Purva Sutena Purva Bhyasena. So through that past life only, past life effort, that vasana itself, you will be carried forward. And you don't even need the Shabda Brahma at that time. So as young as a three-year-old can be in the path of yoga. As young as a five-year-old can be the path of yoga, if the vasanas are right and if the environment is right, where the yogis, the presence of such people in the house itself will take us forward. That's exactly what is being spoken in the last two, three shlokas put together. Right? So there is no loss here, there is no loss here after. That's a consistent message that's coming along. Right? So let's see what Aurobind interpretation says. By that former practice alone, he is irresistibly carried on. Even the seeker after the knowledge of yoga okay, goes beyond the range of the Shabda Brahma. Right? Very simple one. But I think very logically he is explaining how come there is no loss of a yoga prasta, neither here nor hereafter. Right? Shloka number 45, it says Prayatna Yatamanastu Yogi Samshuddha Kilvishaha Aneka janma samtiddha stato yati parangati. Prayatnat yatamanahati. Yogi samshuddha kilvishaha. Aneka janma samtiddha stato yati parangati. The parachedha when we scroll down. Prayatnat yatamanaha tu yogi samshuddha kilvishaha. Aneka janma samtiddha tapaha yati parangati. Right? Uh, when we unjumble then, we get the uh, Anvaya. Anvaya says, He Partha, Prayatna Yatamanaha Yogi 
ಮತ್ತು ಸಂಶುದ್ಧ ಕಿಲ್ವಿಷ ಅನೇಕ ಜನ್ಮ ಸಂಸಿದ್ಧ ತಥ ಪರಾನ್ ಗತಿ ಜಾತಿ ವಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ ವಿ ಸಿ ದ ಡಿಕ್ಷನರಿ ಡಿಕ್ಷನರಿ ಹೇ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನಾತ್ ಯತಮಾನ ಯತಮಾನ ಯತ ಯತ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಯತ್ನ ಯತಮಾನ ಎಂಡೀವರಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಇಸ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ನೆವರ್ ಎಂಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಸಿ ವಿತ್ ದ ವನ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎಂಡೀವರಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ವಿತ್ ಆಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಅಸಿಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ವಿತ್ ರೆಲೆಂಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಪರ್ಸಿವರೆನ್ಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಯತಮಾನ ಯೋಗಿ ದ ಯೋಗಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎಂಡೀವರಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ರೆಲೆಂಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ಯು ನೋ ಅಸಿಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಟು ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಅಸಿಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ರೆಲೆಂಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದ ಯೋಗಿ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಎಂಡೀವರಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ರೆಲೆಂಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ಅಸಿಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಟು ಬಟ್ ಇಂಡ್ ದಿ ಸಂಶುದ್ಧ ಕಿಲ್ಬಿಷ ಬೀಂಗ್ ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ಲಿ ಪ್ಯೂರಿಫೈಡ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿನ್ಸ್ ಕಿಲ್ಬಿಷ ಅನೇಕ ಜನ್ಮ ಸಂಸಿದ್ಧ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಬೀನ್ ಥ್ರೂ ದಿಸ್ ಸಂಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಆಫ್ ಮಲ್ಟಿಪಲ್ ಜನ್ಮ ತಥ ಪರಾನ್ ಗತಿ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಹಿ ವಿಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಅಟೈನ್ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗೋಲ್ ಪರಾನ್ ಗತಿ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗೋಲ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಗೋಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ relentless enduring enduring yogi so with the with the with the benefits of aneka janma samsiddha with you know incremental benefits of many many lives with the perfections added across many many births okay and then completely purified samshuddha kilbisha samshuddha okay one who is been purified of all the sins he will attain the ultimate position right now again the important point is lot of people uh, you know think that you know the yoga samsiddhi is a easy task we don't know how many births are needed to attain that absolute perfection so if today we are in a society where little bit of it is being spoken of i think we are on the right path we are in an elevated path compared to a lot of people a lot of people don't even talk about all this even better if you are in a house which is filled with yogi and yogis are the absolutely capable people who are clockwork you know tick tock tick tock they keep on delivering their duty if if we have such a household we have to consider ourselves extremely lucky which means we also have this punya and in that kind of an environment if we do something wrong then that's a absolute travesty we are actually wasting a lot of time. lot of janma samsidha is been completely flushed out in the drain the second point that comes out very clear thing is that you know what he spoke little while ago before the 32nd shloka around the 25th 26th shloka sah nischayena yuktavya yogo anirvinna chetatah so in the path of yoga to attain that niruddha state to attain that absolute samyama state you have to go there with nischayena yuktavya you have to be absolutely certain no matter how long it takes you have to pledge yourself in the path of yoga and here he says it could be multiple janmas also aneka janma samsiddha so we like it liberated in this but we don't know chances are high because we have a very fortunate position compared to a lot of people okay chances are very high it may be maybe to maybe, maybe this is our final janma maybe not but the prayatna should be on people who have quit smoking after 6 months the logic is very simple you then start smoking your effort of 6 months is gone down the drain flush those in a matter of seconds so that gets them motivated to remain there the more the longer you have quit the greater you can go the longer you can run in the same state so that becomes the motivation so the reason the, the very fact that we are all where we are is the fact that it's an added up you know incrementally added up punya of many many past lives if we do something wrong now everything goes for a pause so for all you know we get liberated now for all you know we don't there are many more needed we don't so but we have to be that nischayena yoktam jan okay and then aneka janma samsiddha after many many births param gatim jati how does yogina right what does arubindo say for this he says hey arjuna yogi ah sorry next one butter finger okay prayatna oh, eh, oh arjuna but the yogi endeavoring with assiduity purified from the sins perfecting himself through many lives 
attains to the highest goal. Very simple translation, very beautiful. Right, we move on to shloka number 46. The 46 says, Tapasribhyo dhiko yogi jnanibhyo pimato dhikaha karmibhyas chadhiko yogi tasmad yogi bhavarjuna Tapasribhyo dhiko yogi jnanibhyo pimato dhikaha karmibhyas chadhiko yogi tasmad yogi bhavarjuna Very nice, it's a punchline. I think the tasmad yogi bhavarjuna is such a nice line. You can make it as a punchline, right? Use it. Tasma yogi, become a yogi. Let's do the Padacheda. Tapas vibhya adhikaha yogi. Jani bhya api mataha adhikaha. Karmi bhya cha adhikaha yogi. Tasma yogi bhava Arjuna. When we unjumble them, we get the Anvaya, right? Hey Arjuna, yogi tapas vibhya adhikaha. Jani bhya api adhikaha mataha. Karmibhyacha yogi adhikaha tasmat yogi bhava. I think it's, I think some of us can make sense to what exactly he's trying to say. But nonetheless, we click on dictionary. In dictionary it says, hey Arjuna, Arjuna, Arjayati, Arjuna, right? The nice sambodhana. Whenever a good amount of knowledge is being debriefed or drilled in, Arjuna as a word comes, sambodhana, very nice. Because that's the good. Representation of uh, Shravana Manana Nididhyasana. Okay, Jnana Arjuna. Arjuna. Hey, Arjuna. Yogi tapas vibhyaha adhikaha. Yogi is superior, is greater to the tapasvis. Jnanibhyaha api adhikaha mataha. He is held greater even to the jnanis. Karmibhyaha yogi adhikaha. He is greater to even the karma, karma, you know, karma yogis or karmibhya. Karmis. Tasma yogi bhava. Therefore, you become a yogi. Very simple. He says, yogi is better than a tapasvi. Yogi is better than a jnani. Yogi is better than a karmi. You become a yogi. Very, very nice. See, this is something that goes a little contradiction, right? So, there are some Vedic lines, you know, tapasa, brahma, vijijna, saswa, tatsarvam, tapasa, sadhyam. So tapas is the path for brahma. You say, in Bhagavad Gita itself, he said, like, you know, durena, shyavaram, karma, buddhi yoga, dhanan, jaya, karma. Jnana is very important. Okay. Jnana, deva, tukai, valyam. And karma is also important. Karma, deva, hi, samsiddhim, maas, chita, janaka, daya, and jnana tapas, no, jnana tapasa putaha. There are many Vedic lines. Some lines earlier in the Bhagavad Gita also. They say jnana karma tapas. No, tapo jnana. We get to hear them a lot in the 18th chapter also. In the book. These three are important. But all three are nothing without yoga. That's what primarily he says. And interestingly, right, and some of us who do the regular adhyayana of the Manusmriti, we will perhaps remember that the Yuga Dharma, the Kruta Yuga's ultimate Dharma, Parama Dharma is Tapasya. The Treta Yuga's Parama Dharma is Jnana. And Dwapara Yuga, that is where we are directly. The Bhagavad Gita is happening in the cusp of uh, Kali Yuga and Dwapara Yuga, end of Dwapara Yuga. And people say at the time of this Bhagavad Gita Upadesha, it's already Kali Yuga. Right? The Amsha, Kali Amsha, Sandhya Amsha is already set in. Right? So, the Parama Dharma of Dwapara Yuga is Yajna or Karma. Yajna, Yajna all begins with Karma. Right? So, wherever we see Ashrameda, Yaga, Yajna, you know, Tadasuya, Yajna, wherever we see, it's all Karma. You know, take the horse, go to different, different places, you know, take the surrendering allegiance, the pledge, all, whatever we have to say, right? So, takes a lot of effort, karma. What the shloka is telling, beyond all of these things, ultimately you have to have yoga. What is yoga? I think we heard the definition of yoga earlier, right? <clears throat> yoga, shakyo avatum upayataha. I think, what is the shloka? Shloka number 30. Uh, 30. Shakyo avatum upayataha. Uh, 
आई थिंक थर्टी सिक्स हाँ थर्टी सिक्स असंयतात्मना योग दुष्प्राप इति मे मति वश्यात्मना तो यत शक्यो अवाप्त उपाय सो योग कैन बी अटेन थ्रू उपाय योग इट से उपाय सो योग एंड उपाय बींग इंटरचेंज दे आर लाइक नो राम रामण युद्ध राम रावण राम रावण रावण राम रावण Perhaps complete 
look at one more shloka because that will logically conclude us for one chapter, six chapter, and then we can begin from seven chapter, the next session. The last shloka, shloka number forty-seven is, Yogi na mapi sarveesha madgate nantaratmana shraddha va bhajate yuma sami yukta tamo mataha. Yogi na mapi sarveesha madgate nantaratmana shraddha va bhajate yuma. Same yuktatam omataha. So the Padacheda Yoginam api sarvesham mat gatena antaha atmana antaratmana. Sadhavan pajate yaha maam saha me yuktatamaha mataha. Then we unjumble them. Sarvesham yoginam api yaha mat gatena antaratmana maam pajate. Saha shadhavan. Yukta Tamaha Me Mataha. What does that mean? You click on the dictionary. He Arjuna, Sarvesham Yogina Mati. Even among all the yogis, Yaha, the one who Matkatena Antaratmana Maam Bhajati. Matkatena. You know, by being inside of me. Antaratmana, with all his Antakarana, Antakarana is buddhi, manas, ahankara, indriya, all the, all the instruments. Antakarana are the instruments within the body, right? Mat gatena, completely given into me. Antaratmana, with all this Antakarana, maam bhajate, worships me, offers himself to me, worships, you know, adores me, approaches me, loves me. Saha, he, Shraddhavan Yukta Tamaha Iti Me Mataha. So he is the one who has absolute faith. Or that Shraddha, Yaha Shraddhavan Matgatena Antaratmana Maam Bhajate. The one with absolute Shraddha, you know, worships me with complete pledge of all his Antakarana and completely surrendering unto me. Getting completely into me. Saha Yukta Tamaha Me Mataha. In my opinion, he is the Yukta Tamaha, the most united. See, Yukta, Yukta Taraha, Yukta Tamaha. You know, Yukti, better Yukta, greatest of the Yukti. Yukti, Yukti is basically capable, right? Ideal, fit. Okay, Yukta is right, right? Suitableness, the suitability or suitableness. Okay, that's the Yukti. The one in yoga, basically, I have to achieve the capability. So, Krishna is telling, even among the lot of these yogis <coughs> who can understand the fact, even among them, the one who is absolutely Shraddhavan, Shraddha is again a very unique word, right? Faith, trust, belief, they are all you know, knowledge, they are all conjointed, they are all intertwined, tightly coupled. Yaha Shraddhavan Matgatena Antaratmana completely towards me and he is who not this cartoon Krishna with a blue colored body with a flute in his hand and a peacock feather of the crown the Parabrahma the concept is being spoken a little bit in the fourth chapter I think soon after this we will hear more about it right but the Parabrahma the one who offers himself to me completely so for now we have to understand Bhoktaram Yajna Tapasam Sarva Loka Maheshwaram that, that Param Brahma is the one who consumes everything, which means then I offer myself to him. Eat nicely. Any which way you are consuming it all, consume it nicely. I offer it very nicely. And so, Matkatena, Antaratmana, Maam Bhajate, does everything for my sake. He offers everything to me. Vibhajana, Bhajana, Bhajana, Bhajate, Bhajana, Bhakti, it all comes from Bhajana. Vibhajana in our local language is division. We offer a piece into the Bhagavan. Okay. Saha Shraddhavan. That Shraddhavan. Me Mataha Yukta Tamaha. In my opinion, is Yukta Tamaha. Like, see, in the way, Yukta, yukta can be somebody who worships. You know, in the Yoga Samsiddhi, he is Yukta. He is properly capable. But he is uh, in the Adhina of different, different deities because they are all Kamatma, Bhoga, Abhishtapala, Sadayaka. Devas, like Deva Bhavayatane, Nate Deva Bhavayantuvaha. So when we, when we offer our yajna for all these selfish benefits and we you know, go subservient to different, different deities, 
then it is yukta. You see, it's a yukta. But there are people who come to the parabrahma, but parabrahma also they come with an ulterior motive. Okay, sakama, parabrahma, you know, upasakas, like, you know, narayana, whatever way, you know, you want to call it parabrahma. You know, but saka, sak, uh, no, uh, sakama, uh, sakama atmaka, uh, you know, Vishnu, uh, you know, upasaka. We can call them as yukta saraha. They are better. They are yukta, but they are yukta saraha. Yukta tamah is niswartha, nishkama, parabrahma upasaka. Without anything. Okay, I just do it. I just do it because this is my duty. I come under you. I Whether I get mukti now, whether I get any phala now, you, you know what is right. You know very well that, you know, for the good things that I do, there is no loss of effort here. There is no loss of effort hereafter. Okay, if I get something good, good for me, my prasada. If I don't get what I desire, I don't lose it because you know what exactly you are giving me. I will keep on burning the gas in full throttle as long as it takes. I just offer myself in this yoga samsindhi path. Okay, my aim is to offer myself in the path of yoga samsindhi. When that yoga samsindhi will acquire, you don't know. And that is the only way to become that absolutely unclustered kartavya sadhaka. Otherwise, the distractions are plenty. And that is where we conclude with this chapter. We will quickly reflect a little bit upon these uh, eight shlokas because seventh chapter is primarily an extension. And in my opinion, the seventh chapter onward, the message becomes even more clearer in terms of how do we get the benefit now? Because we are all bothered about the benefit now. If this is Yoga Shastra, a Shastra to develop capability in all of us, we have to have the benefit now. Of course, you know, we are not totally entitled that you know, I need to get it now. I need to enjoy the capability in this life itself. We don't know when that will happen. But yes, uh, Krishna is helping us know how do we get that in this current birth. And that is what we get building up with the next Shakta. We call it next exile. The next six chapters, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. These six chapters are the next Shakta. Right? In simplistic sense, you know, I would call the first six chapters as the Sadhana Shakta the Kartavya Sadhana Shatta, the Arya Jushta, the three basic purposes of the Bhagavad Gita, the three incremental benefits of Bhagavad Gita, is what was explained in second chapter, second shloka. No, Anarya Jushta Matsvargya Makirti Karamarjuna, the converse of the three messages, become Arya Jushta, become Swarga Para, become Kirti Kara. Right, so these are the three. So in the next, we, the next, the first six chapters so far, it's the Arya Jushta. Arya Jushta is the Kartavya Sadaka. Right? Kartavya Matare, Karya Makartavya Marachare, Tishtati Prakrata Chare, Sa Arya Itivai Smrta. The definition of Arya, Arya Jushta, is somebody who is a relentless Nirantara Kartavya Sadaka. That is this first six chapters. Now, Swarga Para. How do we go Swarga Para? And what is Swarga? That is exactly what we will be looking at, the Vibhuti Shakta, in the next six chapters. And to become vibhuti, vishesha bhuti, vineda vishesha jnana, the vijnana, jnana vijnana yoga. We start from the jnana vijnana yoga from the seventh chapter. We adjourn at this point in time. My apologies for extending. Three, two, one. Namaste vasudevaya tri yasame priyotama samasta guna sampurna nirdosha nandatai. Krishnaya vasudevaya pranasakleshana shaya godindaya namo namaste. Om Bharati Ramamukhya Pranam Tarata Shri Gopala Krishna Priyatam Shri Krishna Arpanamastu. Have a beautiful weekend, people. Have a beautiful week ahead, everyone. Jai Shri Krishna. Jai Shri Krishna.